I'd like to talk about some of the primitive types that you can use in C++. Some basic ones are the integer, float, and double, the bool, and the char. Integer is basically whole numbers, and so there are also short and long ints, which basically alter the number of bits you can have, as well as uh, unsigned ints, which I'll talk about later on. Float and double are real types. They use the IEEE standard for how they represent it. Bool is a Boolean type, so it's either a true or a false value. And chars are a character type, basically a single individual letter or symbol that's from the keyboard. It could be the numbers as well if you represent them like that. So what is binary? A bit is a single one or zero, so it's a binary digit is what a bit stands for. A bit can either be on or off, basically electricity flowing or not in an actual microchip, and it's represented through ones and zeros. Eight bits is one byte. The way you represent it is by powers of two. So this digit is the two to the zero power. This is the two to the one power. Two to the one is two. This is two to the two, so two squared is four, and so on down the line. Basically, you're doubling each time. So one times two is two, times two is four, times two is eight, so on down. If you have a one in that spot, you add that digit onto the number if you're going to be converting to decimal. For example, so this number up here, you add the one, the four, the 16, the 32, the 128, and it equals 181 in decimal. It may be tempting to look at this number and go, okay, how do I represent negatives? That's not possible, right? Well, there's a couple ways of doing that. One way is that you might come up with is called one's complement, where you just take this first bit and say, all right, that's a negative sign if it's a one. So this would become negative 53 in that case. This has some problems. It means that you can represent zero and positive zero and negative zero in this encoding. Also, the numbers don't naturally add together, which is also kind of a problem. So there's a, another encoding that ends up getting used more often called two's complement. In two's complement, what you do is you take your number, so in this case, 22, and you flip all the bits, and then you add one. And that becomes your negative representation. The nice thing about this is then you can add numbers together, and they actually add pretty naturally. And you only have one representation of zero, which is also very nice. There is a drawback to this. The drawback is that there is a negative number called the weird number, which is the most negative of these. And there's no positive inverse of this. So there's no positive 128. There's a positive 127, but what would be one, positive 128 is the zero representation. Another way to represent binary is often using hexadecimal, actually. Hexadecimal, you have the numbers 0 through 9, and then A is 10, B is 11, all the way up through 15. So there's actually 16 digits to this. The advantage of this is that you can actually represent four bits using a single hexadecimal letter or digit. So for example, if all ones would be an F, so that represents the 15. You can represent all zeros with the zero. And so you can actually encode this number, which has eight bits to it, using two hexadecimal letters or numbers. You often see hexadecimal when doing web colors, or any kind of colors, actually. So usually you'll, they'll use the red, green, blue way of encoding color. So these first two digits here are two hexadecimal digits, which represent red. And then the next two are green, and the next two are blue. So this is red, green, and blue for this number here, with that as a decimal number. So CC is 204 in decimal. Often you'll see these two as different ways of representing hexadecimal. So that particular number is this color blue. Floating point is a lot trickier. It uses a special kind of encoding where it has a sign bit, eight bits of exponent, and the rest is mantissa, or basically significant digits. The double is, has a lot more bits for the exponent of mantissa, so it's got 64 bits of precision. The formula is you take positive or negative one, depending on the sign bit, times one point, whatever this binary digit is, times two raised to the e power, basically. So it's a lot like scientific notation in that way, and it can represent very large and very small numbers in that by using this formula. There are some special reserved cases for floating point numbers that include zero, one, positive and negative infinity, and not a number. So if you divide by zero, you get not a number. So these are special encodings that have particular meanings when you are actually dealing with the math. Bools are true or false only, so just true is a one, false is a zero. 
oftentimes in C++, anything that's not zero gets treated as true, but the actual values would be one or zero. A character is basically an ASCII value. So there's a chart called the ASCII chart, American Standard Code for Information Ex Interchange, which has most of the things you'll see on a keyboard. So here's the numbers, which are represented as 48 through 57 in decimal. Uh, capital A is a 65, the lowercase a is a 97. You'll find all sorts of interesting things in there. So a single character is these things here. Keep in mind, the character zero, which is a 48 in decimal, is not the same thing as a number zero. Hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the primitive types that you're allowed to use in C++.